Hello, friends, and welcome to Self-Care in Stressful Times. I'm Dana Bristol-Smith with Leap to Success. We are a women's empowerment organization based in Carlsbad, California, and our mission is to educate and empower women who are overcoming domestic violence, homelessness, and other major life challenges. Um, by participating today in self-care in stressful times, you're making a commitment to your own self-care and you'll be learning techniques to help yourself, take better care of yourself and to share with those you love and others that you work with or care for. We know that many of you who are with us today are helpers. You're people who are helping people on the front lines of our pandemic and you're dealing with people who are in crisis. And now more than ever, you need time to recharge your batteries. So I'm so glad that we have so many of you with us today. And today you are gonna learn about the importance of a Q-tip for self-care. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, it's not what you think. So I'm gonna set that down and keep you in suspense. I wanna take a moment and introduce my co-host, Kelly Grimes. So say hi, Kelly. Thank you so much, Dana. And I love that you brought a Q-tip with you. That'll be helpful <laughs> I share later on. Yeah, that'll be great. Thank, thank you, Kelly. The And what I will be doing is walking you through a guided mindfulness practice. And then Kelly will be giving you three tips for your own self-care to create more harmonious relationships in your life because the topic today is bringing harmony to your life. And it follows the theme that we are um, connecting to all month for Valentine's. And the theme is the affirmation, I am lovable. And I want you to know that you are lovable as well. And I'm going to go ahead and ask Alyssa to put our poll up because we're going to do the check-in to see what is the current level of stress that you are feeling right now in your body. And please go ahead and rate yourself on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being low level of stress to 10 being off the charts. Thank you. I see your responses coming in right now. It looks like we've got quite a few people at a 7. We've got a couple of people at an eight, now a four. It's kind of like a horse race as these numbers are coming in, seeing where um, where most people are hanging out. And it looks like that our average is about a six. So um, that's a pretty high level of stress to be caring. So I'm so glad that you're prioritizing yourself, which by the way, is the topic for next week. But let's come on back to our guided mindfulness practice. Last week, we introduced a loving kindness meditation. And I want to go a little bit deeper with you about loving kindness. Um, loving kindness is also known as metta. And it's a Buddhist practice that has been around for thousands of years. And metta in the language Pali which is closely related to Sanskrit, is a language that's used in Northern India. And what metta means in Pali is positive energy and kindness towards others. So the goal of the metta meditation is to cultivate kindness for all beings, including ourselves and our family, our friends, our neighbors, acquaintances, the difficult people, in our lives and also animals. So I'm gonna walk you through this meta or loving kindness practice and invite you to go ahead and close your eyes and just be comfortable in your chair right now. And I want you to know that this type of meditation is beneficial for your mental, your emotional and your physical health. And it's especially useful for reducing negative emotions towards yourself and towards others. So go ahead and close your eyes and sit comfortably with your feet flat on the floor and your spine straight. Take a breath in and as you release it, relax your whole body and go ahead and keep your eyes closed if you can throughout this whole visualization so you can really bring your awareness inward. 
So without straining or having to deeply concentrate, just relax and follow these instructions. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. First, we're gonna focus on receiving loving kindness. Keeping your eyes closed, think of a person close to you who loves you very much. It could be someone from the past or the present or someone still in life or who has passed away. It could be a spiritual teacher or guide, someone who has been supportive and loving towards you. Imagine that person standing on your right side, sending you their love. Feel the warm wishes and love coming from that person towards you. Now bring to mind the same person or another person who cherishes you deeply. Imagine that person standing on your left side, sending you wishes for your wellness, for your health, and for your happiness. Feel the kindness and warmth coming to you from that person. Now imagine that you are surrounded on all sides by all the people who love you and have loved you. Picture all of your friends and loved ones surrounding you. They are standing right around you and they are sending you wishes for your happiness, well-being and health. Bask in those warm wishes and feel the love coming to you from all sides and breathe that in. Now bring your awareness back to the person standing on your right side. Begin to send the love that you feel back to that person. You and this person are similar. Just like you, this person wishes to be happy. Send all your love and warm wishes to that person. And repeat this phrase silently. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Now focus your awareness on the person standing on your left side. Begin to direct the love within you to that person. Send all your love and warmth to that person. That person and you are alike. Just like you, that person wishes to have a good life. Repeat the following phrase silently. Just as I wish to, may you be safe. May you be healthy. May you live with ease and happiness. Now picture another person that you love, perhaps a relative or a friend. This person like you wishes to have a happy life. Send warm wishes to that person and repeat this phrase silently. May your life be filled with happiness health, and well-being. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free from all pain. Now, think of an acquaintance, someone you don't know very well and toward whom you do not have any particular feeling. You and this person are alike in your wish to have a good life. Send all your wishes for well-being to this person, repeating this following phrase silently. Just as I wish to, may you also live with ease and happiness. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free from pain. Now expand your awareness and picture the whole globe in front of you as a little ball. 
send warm wishes to all beings on the globe who like you want to be happy. Just as I wish to, may you live with ease, happiness, and good health. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you be free from all pain. Now take a deep breath in and breathe out and do that one more time. And notice the state of your mind and how you feel as this meditation completes. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Welcome back, friends. Thank you for participating in that loving kindness practice in such a beautiful way to connect to yourself, to send yourself those good wishes, to receive them from those who love us, and then send them back out again to the whole world. What a perfect meditation for our topic today, which is bringing harmony to your life. So I'm gonna invite Kelly to come on and guide us with some useful tips. Here's Kelly. Thank you so much, Dana. Oh, I love loving kindness. And it's such a beautiful practice to start with ourselves. I, I really appreciated that um, we could imagine those people that loved us around us, sending that to us so that we could really receive it. So that was really beautiful. Yes, let's talk about bringing harmony to our lives, friends. In this pandemic, we have lived with unprecedented levels of stress, right? We've continued to experience so much loss and disappointment and just this ongoing uncertainty. And so a lot of us have been feeling a deep sense of grief, of loss, of disappointment. Uh, and I think sometimes it has put us in that kind of constant state of stress and, and looking for what danger is going, you know, we are going to be faced with next. Um, and that doesn't usually add, kind of living at that level of stress doesn't usually add to a sense of harmony that we feel. And oftentimes it can actually impact our relationships too. I've noticed that um, when I feel more stressed, I might feel more sensitive. And if other people are feeling more sensitive around, that can lead to um, conflict or misunderstandings, hurt feelings. Also, the fact we've had to be physically distanced for some people that we um, love may have strained our relationships or, <laughs> you know, when we're quarantined and in our homes and working and going to school and living all with the same folks day after day. And that sometimes can create situations where um, we feel some disharmony. So if you are feeling any sense of disharmony in this moment as a result of the pandemic, you're not alone. And so much of what we have been doing almost for a year in this self-care series is just finding ways back home to ourselves, more tools just to be present so that we can make choices. And so what I was hoping to share with you today are some ways that are really effective in creating a little bit of space to then make some really empowered choices and create more harmony in our lives. So the first strategy, and we teach this in our Leap to Confidence classes, when we're looking at how to um, manage uh, conflict and other things, the first thing that really, I think, transforms our understanding of our locus of control, right? So we're really looking at what we can do, and it's not to take things personally. Now, this is a really simple message, but it's not easy to do, right? When we're caught into reactive um, modes in the way that we interact with folks. But what's really, really important to remind ourselves is that usually whatever somebody is communicating with us, if they, have, if they are upset or they're having a, a challenge at the time, it usually has nothing to do with us. And yet when we take it personally, we get defensive 
And then we end up reacting and escalating the situation sometimes before we even know what happened. So many of us have taught to be responsible for other people's feelings. You know, that whole, you know, you made me mad or whatever. So we've kind of taken that on thinking that if somebody's upset, it's our responsibility to take care of them, to, to be sure that, you know, we can problem solve and find a solution. And yet, most of the time when people are upset, they just want to feel affirmed and acknowledged for their emotions. And so when we take things personally, it ends up being about, we think it ends up being about us and we stop listening. And listening, I believe, really active listening, is the most powerful tool that we can have to create harmony in our relationships. So when we realize right from the start like remind ourselves right from the start not to take things personally, we can actually hear people out. We can actually hear what's going on versus getting defensive and and then feeling like we have to, to come back with a, you know, an argument or a solution or something like that that creates more um, challenge. We have a graduate of our Leap to Confidence and Transformation Leadership Program named Angelica. And she gave us the most beautiful gift that she had been given by a nurse to remind ourselves not to take it personally. So Angelica has been the most amazing um, mother and caregiver for a son who's had chronic health challenges his whole life. So she spent many, many hours in hospitals and in doctor appointments and other things. And so she learned this very early on from a nurse and the nurse said that she carried a Q-tip. That's right, we're back to the Q-tip, friends. She carried a Q-tip in her pocket to remind her to quit taking it personally. Now, you can imagine this nurse oftentimes was with people that were in the most difficult situations, really challenged, and so they might be really upset and be yelling and, and or concerned. And what she would do is she would just touch the Q-tip as a reminder to not take it personally, to quit taking it personally so that she could really show up and be supportive in the, in the most empowering way to the families going through difficult situations. So, Angelica... We are so grateful. We, we teach your Q-tip message that you got to every Leap to Confidence class. And I'm gonna invite you all to try it out. You can put a Q-tip in your pocket. You could put it in a little bag and put it in your purse. You could see it. I We hear from some folks that they leave it out in different places. You might pick it up um, when you're going to have a difficult conversation with somebody to remind yourself to, to Quit taking it personally. Uh, and there's something tactile about actually touching something. It helps bring us to the present moment. That's the beauty of all our mindfulness practices too. When we're in the present moment, we're so much less reactive. We can breathe. We can take a breath, which is always really important in not taking things personally. Take a breath and give yourself a moment of some perspective. And then choose to listen. So that's the first tip. Thank you so much, Angelica, for the Q-tip metaphor. It's really beautiful. The second thing that goes along with that, and this is another really empowering strategy, and it's called don't pick up the rope. You see, oftentimes when we are in relationships with folks, we know um, how to, to push their buttons, to get some reaction or a rise out of folks. And what happens is sometimes we, those are the majority of our interactions, right? I don't know um, if you saw this in your family of origin or in different relationships you see um, as a counselor, uh, and I used to do family sessions all the time. I mean, you would see it played out where one person, you know, one child would say one thing to another person to get a rise out of them. And the fact is, is that it's very similar, if we can imagine, to having a rope and playing tug of war, right? and pulling back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That's what happens a lot of the times in this until usually then somebody falls over, which means somebody's lost, right? They, they, they lost. And so there's like winners and losers and that creates more resentment and more conflict and more power dynamics. And so the idea with this is that instead of picking up the rope to start having this tussle, this power struggle that we just choose not to, 
you can imagine how powerful that choice would be. You'd have to start with not taking things personally, right? Because usually uh, we feel hurt, right? Or we feel angry um, um, that somebody has said something to us. And so then we get in that reactive um, way where we're pulling back and forth on the rope. The, the choice to not pick up the rope actually gives us a whole lot more power because it's a power from within. It's that sense that we have choice in the interactions that we have with people and that we can choose to set a boundary. The boundary might be we have to, to walk away. Usually when we've been interacting with folks for a long time in a similar manner, there's old resentments that are built up. There's old hurts. There's other things that get triggered when that button's pushed, right? Um, you know, maybe maybe a family member teased you about something. And so then when you get you know, that feeling of embarrassment or whatever comes up, it's really easy to kind of get back and, and engage in that power struggle. It's really, really powerful to choose instead not to, and to just lay down the row. And I've heard the most amazing things from our graduates about what a huge difference that's made in feeling more empowered, more confident, and also to have more harmony in relationships because we're not re- injuring each other with those old ways of interacting. So I invite you to maybe gain some perspective, see where there might be situations where there's some reactiveness um, from you and another person and choose to do something different. We know that at first, sometimes it's hard if we've been doing things the same way for other people to uh, understand <laughs> that we're kind of changing the rules by not engaging in that way, but we can have such incredible ripples of positive effect when we feel empowered and we choose rather than react. And I think that's the thing. For me to feel confident on this planet, you know, being able to manage stress is really important and be able to make choices instead of feeling like life is happening to me, that I'm making choices in the interactions that I have. So my third thing to share with you is actually to choose to use loving kindness in the moment. Now, I love the way that um, Dana took us through really understanding that um, it's an aspiration that we have for ourselves that we know others have in the world. That aspiration to be healthy, to be safe, to be happy, to be at peace. You have a really wonderful opportunity to write your own aspirations out and then start with yourself and then have it ripple out. One way I really like to do it is I like to say, um, when, I, when I say I, I start mine with may I, like really, you know, inviting that in. So these are some of the ones that I use, but I would start with may I be safe. Now that means something so much more deeply to me now that we've been in this COVID time of this pandemic um, and impacted in so many ways. So I really love to start, may I be safe? And then may I be healthy, right? Those are just really foundational uh, for me. And then may I be at peace? May I practice compassion and forgiveness? I love that as a reminder to myself because I know that if there's been any disharmony, if I can practice compassion, both for myself and the other person, as well as forgiveness, then that's going to be healing to my relationships and allow the relationships to grow and blossom. Um, the, the next thing is, may I be my own best friend? Reminding myself again that I can be loving and tender and kind to myself. And a few weeks ago, we talked about self-compassion and treating ourselves like our own best friend. So I like to aspire to that. May I be my own best friend. And then may I live life with ease. So those are the ones I use in an ongoing way. And then what I would say is, I would go to the person that I love and I would say, may you, and I would go through all of those again. May you be safe. May you live life with ease. You know, so I go through all of those. And then I switch it and I say, may we. Now you can do it in all different sorts of ways, but what I like for myself is the we expands it out to know that I am part of a bigger community of people and that I'm hope wishing this for everyone, for all beings. 
Um, when we send loving intentions out to people, it changes how we feel. It's like the affirmations that we put out to the world, they change our brain, our neural pathways to be positive, to be in that place. I feel open hearted when I use these aspirations, this loving kindness. Um, and for years I would use it with my teenage daughter when there were no words I could use that would make a situation better. She'd be upset about something and there were no words, but what I could do is I could ground myself with those aspirations for myself, say them for her all in my, in my head, not out loud, and then say we so that I was creating this sense of harmony and it changed things. Maybe it was just that I didn't respond or try to fix something when she just needed to, to be where she was at, but I felt different and I felt more able to be present. I want to share what John Kabat-Zinn says, and he is the founder of Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, and he is an incredible, inspiring mindfulness teacher. And he said, there is really no natural limit to the practice of loving kindness in meditation or in one's life. It is ongoing, ever expanding realization of interconnectedness. And it's also about embodiment. When you can love one tree, one flower, one dog, one place, one person, or yourself in one moment, you can find all people, all places, all suffering, all harmony in that moment. Practicing in this way isn't trying to tr change anything or get anywhere, although it might look like that on the surface. What it's really doing is uncovering what is always present. Love and kindness are here all the time. Somewhere, in fact, everywhere. Usually our ability to touch them and be touched by them lies buried beneath our own fears and hurts, below our greed and hatreds, below our desperate clinging to the illusion that we are separate and alone. So I love, I love that idea that it's this ever expanding practice and it's a really important self-nurturing practice in my life. So I'm wondering, what new practice will you try this week to create more harmony in your life? I love that we keep offering different practices so you can try them on and see what fits for you. I would love if anybody um, is interested in sharing um, any new practices that I could share with you um, that might inspire other people to hear what you're going to do. It might be really bringing attention to not taking things personally. Maybe you are going to get a Q-tip. Um, somebody else just said they're going to use a loving kindness practice. Maybe it's that you're going to really choose not to pick up the rope. But whatever it is, give yourself permission to make it a priority. In these times, we need each of us to be grounded in our own loving kindness for ourselves as we continue to spread that out in the world and create more harmony. So I thank you so much for being here. I'm going to hand things back over to Dana, and I hope these practices have, have inspired some new way of creating more harmony in your life. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kelly. That, that was lovely. And I see that we're getting a few responses right now to your last question. So I'll go ahead and read them out. Um, someone has said, I find I can pray for difficult others with loving kindness. Yeah, that's a great thing to do when we're having difficulty with others. And someone else says, I will give myself permission to be kind to myself. That, that's great. Um, and it's, it's not easy to do because we really tend to be hard on ourselves. And I hope that some of you will pick up a Q-tip and keep that with you uh, to give yourself that reminder to not take other people's upsets and other people's difficulties. Um, personally, but uh, it is doable. So as we close here, I'd like to check in with you once again with our stress poll and see how you would rate yourself right now on the scale of one to 10. So let us know where you are. And as those numbers are coming in and I see you, uh, I see them coming in right now and they look at levels two, three, and four for the most part, um, with the greatest number of people at three. So that's a really nice decrease from six, where you were just less than 30 minutes ago. So I'm, I'm really glad for that. 
I want to remind you that we post these uh, episodes up on our Leap to Success YouTube channel, and we also have them on our Facebook page of Leap to Success. And I hope that you will visit us at our Facebook page or at our YouTube channel and give us your comments and let us know what practices are most helpful to you. Um, what have you learned that you're using and what else would you like to learn that we can support you with in terms of your own self-care? Um, I want you to remember how important you truly are and that if you don't take good care of yourselves or you don't give yourself the time that you need to refill your cup, to recharge your batteries, it makes it that much more difficult to be there for others. So take good care of yourself, my friends, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye-bye.